Academy, where there are hundreds of girls for every boy. However, the school is extremely strict, and this is why boys are unable to find any lady luck. Now, we meet our heroes, Kiyoshi, Kakuto, Shingo, Kayoshi, Joe, and Andre. Kiyoshi struggles to talk to girls even despite his best efforts, and he is berated by his buddies. After class, a girl named Chio notices Kiyoshi's sumo eraser and chats him up because she is a fan. She eventually asks him out to watch a sumo tournament, and he aggressively agrees. At night, the boys make plans to peep in on the girls' bathroom and execute their mission in dramatic fashion. However, Kiyoshi worries that his friends will also get to see Chio in a compromised position. Luckily, he notices that she's not there and joins the boys as they sneak in a camera phone. However, they drop the phone inside the room with their faces exposed. So Kiyoshi goes to retrieve it. Chio catches him in the act but mistakes him to be her friend. So she brings him inside. The others decide to join in on the fun but are caught by the underground student council, led by Crow Mistress Mari, Karate Champion Hannah, and Curvy Queen Shiraki. Kayoshi is also caught in the act and then the boys are sentenced to one month in school prison as punishment for their actions. Our heroes try to reason that this is a violation of human rights, but the mistresses argue that they will be exposed for peeping on the girls if they fight the case. With no other option, the boys agree to be their slaves, but seem to enjoy getting dominated by their mistresses. That's when Hannah gets to work and uses her karate skills skills to force the boys into collecting clover leaves. Now, Kiyoshi meets Chio and tries to tell the truth, but he promises to meet her for the sumo date instead. Unfortunately, a crow attacks him and he falls in front of Hannah who is relieving herself. This causes her to cry as she has been exposed. The boys go back to jail and they congratulate Kiyoshi for making the dominatrix suffer. Later, Chairman Kurihara, who is also Mari's dad, opposes her brutal actions and orders her to give the prisoners holidays on the weekend. However, she ignores his instructions and forces the boys to work even on Saturday and Sunday. This worries Kiyoshi as he won't be able to go on his date, so he decides to carry out a prison break. Later, Chio sends Kiyoshi a letter for their date, but Kakuto finds it and starts to harass his friend. The next day, Hannah forces Kiyoshi to pee in front of her, but Kakuto saves him in the nick of time. That's when he reveals that he is actually on Kiyoshi's side, and wants him to break out as he wants him to collect some limited edition Chinese figurines. After work, Kakuto and Kiyoshi Kiyoshi try to arrange their breakout with a highly detailed plan while the others just mess around. The next day, the boys create a distraction by fighting each other, and it leads to Hannah breaking the shed. They are ordered to fix it and use this as a cover to escape. However, Hannah decides to stay and watch the boys, and she also forces Kiyoshi to drink tea so that he can use the washroom. She follows him there, and a hilarious sequence of events leads to Hannah getting wet. This forces her to take a break from school. Shiraki supervises the boys as they continue with the shed work, and Kiyoshi decides to go to the forest in order to figure out his escape route. He is halted when he notices the chairman hiding his secret magazines in the soil. Luckily, he manages to make it back to the site before Shiraki catches him. At night, the curvy queen briefs the boys on next week's schedule, so Kiyoshi and Gakudo make their arrangements. However, this makes Shingo suspicious, so he spies on his friends. He catches them in a suspicious pose and mistakes them to be dating each other. Now, the boys are given some electronic devices, and Gakudo Kudo figures he could use his voice recorder as a distraction. However, this involves soiling his pants as part of a testing session. Everything seems to be going according to plan, but then it gets spoiled when the chairman fixes the secret hole that the boys had made. The masterminds rue their missed opportunity, while the others confront them for being boyfriends. No other choice, Kiyoshi decides the only option is to dress up as a girl and make his way out the front gate. The next day, Gakudo intentionally misbehaves with Shiraki and takes it a step further further by targeting Mari. The president excuses herself and Shiraki sets herself loose on Gakudo for being creepy. She decides to punish him in a rather spicy way, but just shaves his head instead. This was basically a scheme to use Gakudo's hair as a wig for Kiyoshi. The next day, the boys create a distraction so that Kiyoshi can get a hold of some undergarments and a uniform for his disguise. At night, Mari confronts Shiraki and warns her not to lose her focus. Now, Kiyoshi sets his plans in action and changes into a girl, but Shiraki senses something suspicious and checks his location. Luckily, she is fooled by his disguise and lets him go. Before he can make it out for good, Mari briefly stops him but it's only for a uniform issue and she lets him go. Although she does notice his shoes, our hero finally meets Chio and gets to enjoy a date with her, but Shiraki checks out the washroom to see why he's missing from prison. Luckily, Kakuto uses his voice recorder to make fart sounds and fool her. However, everything falls apart when Chio spots the uniform in Kiyoshi's bag and learns that it's 
it's actually hers. She calls him a creep, and to make matters worse, Shiraki runs out of patience, so she breaks into the washroom to check on her slave. Luckily, Kayoshi is inside as his date was cut short, but then Mari identifies his shoes and reveals that she is Chio's sister. She shows a picture Chio had taken of him, and the mistresses decide that this is the last straw. Kayoshi willingly takes all the blame for himself to save his friends, but Mari wishes to expel him from school. Shiraki wonders how she can do this as she doesn't have the authority, but the evil president says that she will make her slave do it voluntarily. Luckily, Chio comes to save him as she realized Kiyoshi must have had a legitimate reason for doing what he did. She threatens to drop out of school if Mari forces Kiyoshi any further and also mentions that he likes crows, so he must be a good boy. This twisted logic seems to work on the dominatrix and she allows Kiyoshi to return to his cell. Our hero is happy that he is staying in school, but only Gakudo is nice to him as the others are still upset with his betrayal. Meanwhile, Mari has Shiraki conduct an investigation on the boys, as she has an evil plan in mind. Even Hannah returns to school and tells Kiyoshi that she will get revenge for what he did to her in the washroom. The evil council meets and decides to use Shingo as their pawn, so Shiraki gets to work by tempting him with some treats. Shingo hides his secret meetings from the boys and offers the curvy queen information on Joe and Andre. Now, Mari intends to use Joe's fascination with ants against him. Kiyoshi spots Shingo acting suspicious with Shiraki, after which the spy distracts Joe. This allows Mari to instruct her crows to attack Joe's ants, and he loses his mind when he sees it. Joe attacks Shiraki and is about to kill Mari, but Kiyoshi stops him and makes an excuse to save Joe from expulsion. That's when the evil president reveals that her crows never killed Joe's ants, and this was a trap all along. Later, Hannah tries to get kinky with Kiyoshi, but Chio interrupts them and they hide together. However, this makes Kiyoshi very excited and his touch makes Hannah faint. Mari's evil plans fail when the chairman refuses to listen to her, so she decides to accelerate her tactics. Joe gets out of solitary and makes up with Kiyoshi for saving him. However, our hero tells Joe that there is a conspiracy going on as he saw Shingo acting shady. The spy is allowed to leave the campus so that Shiraki can have more control over him. He buys some snacks for her as he comes back, but also meets a girl named Anzu in the process and gets excited. Later, he spots a toy knife in the washroom and hands it over to Shiraki. This turns out to be Kakuto's toy and Shiraki connects the dots after conducting some research. She allows Shingo to go to the arcade again when he meets his fantasy girl. Anzu takes him out for a date and they get to know each other some more, after which she asks him out for a movie. Shingo is unable to make it now, but he promises to see her later. The next day, Shiraki calls out Kakuto for keeping figurines and tries to convince him to confess his role in Kiyoshi's prison break. An intense sequence follows and everyone panics, but Kakuto smashes the toys to save himself and then he leaves with Kiyoshi. Now, Shingo arrives and reveals to Mari that he had picked up the toy sword from the restroom, so she faints as she had tasted it before. Shiraki begs for forgiveness, but Mari decides to assume command by herself. At night, Shingo tries to get the boys to turn on Gakudo, but they side with him and suspect the spy of being shady. Now, Shiraki checks Andre's diary and learns that he likes to be treated as a slave, so he refuses to give him pleasure. However, her new outfit really bothers her, so Chio tries to help. That's when she learns about the evil plan that her mad sister is trying to carry out. Andre starts to go crazy without any kind of spanking and he struggles to carry out his duties. Kiyoshi becomes suspicious so he asks Shingo if he knows something. However, the spy acts innocent and makes his way to Shiraki, who allows him to go on his movie date with Anzu. Meanwhile, Chio hints to Kiyoshi that Mari plans to kick him out, so he talks to the boys about it. They realize what's happening with Andre and try to save him, but they're too late as Shiraki has managed to lure him out of prison and catch him for an attempted breakout. Now, Shingo gets cute with Anzu, but stops when he sees some boys bullying their friends. After sorting it out, he realizes his own situation reveals everything to Anzu. That's when we learn that Anzu is an insider who was fooling around with Shingo, only to keep him outside school. An intense sequence follows as the boys pray for their friend to make it back in time, but he fails at the very last second. The evil council decides to evict the boys based on the fact that they've attempted three breakouts. Shingo apologizes to the boys for his betrayal, but Kiyoshi and the others accept him as their friend. Unfortunately, Mari forces her dad to expel the boys even despite Chio's best efforts to help them. However, our heroes decide to work together to defeat their opponents. Shingo realizes that the evil girls had mentioned their plans over email, and Gakudo states that he can access the data even if it has been destroyed. They are interrupted by Shiraki, and Kiyoshi even manages to sneak a peek. But then they decide to carry on with their discussions. They decide to use the Curvy Queen's weakness against her and try to distract the Vice President by challenging her to an arm wrestling 
game. The boys use this illusion to keep her fooled long enough for Gakudo to steal her keys and make it to the council room. In an impossible sequence of events, all the boys hilariously lose to Shiraki. And then it's Andre's turn. His body hair seems to distract her, and this allows Andre to hold her off for longer than expected. Shiraki insults her opponent, but this only gets him excited, and he takes her on long enough for Gakudo to make it back. However, he states that he cannot recover the data and the team resigns themselves to their expulsion. The boys lose all hope and it shows in their daily activities, especially Gakudo. It's almost time for the execution date and the boys are given the option for a last meal. Chio sneaks a love letter to Kiyoshi and this only drives Gakudo crazy. He asks for grasshoppers as his final dish and it makes him sick, but he also comes back to his senses. He comes up with a risky plan and the boys decide to send an appeal along with their withdrawal forms. However, Shiraki simply tears up the appeal and brings the prisoners to their execution. Luckily, Kiyoshi had anticipated this, so he put the real appeal in his withdrawal form and the chairman asks to meet with the boys by himself. He offers to help them with the conspiracy investigation, but asks them all kinds of weird questions to assess their character. Meanwhile, Hannah remembers her spicy incident with Kiyoshi and heads out to kill him, but Shiraki stops her to avoid the drama. An excessively dramatic sequence follows, but Kiyoshi manages to get one day's extension to prove the team's innocence. However, Mari doesn't approve of this and sends Hannah to investigate them. Shiraki is against the idea and states that Hannah is not in the right state of mind, but the karate champion manages to convince Mari to let her handle the boys. Our heroes plan to tackle Shiraki, but lose hope once they find Hannah as their supervisor. It gets worse for Kiyoshi as she tells him that she remembers everything and will make sure that his mushroom will pay for its sins. Meanwhile, Anzu learns that Shio has been communicating with the prisoners and offers to help her save them. Now, the boys try to trick Hannah into taking them to the infirmary, but she refuses to listen to them, so Gakuda reveals that he knows what she did with Kiyoshi. This prompts her to take our hero to a private place, and she scares him with some scissors. However, she reveals that this is only for a humiliation contest. A hilarious sequence follows as the boy and girl try to see which one of them is more embarrassing. Meanwhile, Shiraki catches a spy and calls Hannah for help, but she refuses to come out as she is compromised. Then we learn that the intruder is actually Anzu, and this allows Chio to carry out her rescue plan. Hannah starts to cry when Kiyoshi refers to her privates as Medusa, and then she kisses him to take away the pleasure of making Chio his first. Time is running out for our heroes as Shiraki proceeds to torture Anzu. Kiyoshi tries to stop Hannah, but she doesn't stop with her assault. Chio notices some sounds from outside the room, so she waits outside, hoping for a signal. Even Gakudo starts imagining a war scenario in his head as the others await their fate. Luckily, Kiyoshi refuses to submit and gives Hannah a taste of her own medicine. He knocks her out and manages to stop Chio from entering at the wrong time. Then he is brought back to his cell and the boys are sent to sleep. Shiraki doesn't get any information from Anzu, so Mari believes that there is nothing to worry about as her prison is inescapable. The day of the execution has arrived and Mari is ready to celebrate, but then we learn that Chio had secretly swapped places with Gakudo. He makes a dramatic entrance. Although it involves him getting beaten up by all the girls, now, Kiyoshi and Gakudo go ahead and reveal their planning in great detail. The chairman finally learns the truth and gives our heroes the freedom they rightfully deserve. On the other hand, Mari and her evil accomplices are sentenced to prison for their inexcusable actions. And that's the end of the show. Like, share, and subscribe for more awesome recaps and hit the bell icon for regular notifications. Okay then, I'll see you in the next one.